Mucklick here, and I make concise game reviews that help you decide if you want to buy something without spoiling the game for you. This is Pokemon Snap. This is Viewfinder, a first-person single-player puzzle platformer. It is available on PC and PS5 and is rated E for everyone. The goal of this video is to determine whether or not this game is worth its $25 price tag for you. The game's setting, with no spoilers beyond the tutorial. After being dropped into the game, you wander around the seemingly magical world, where you can bring things to life from pictures you find or take yourself. A woman's voice, Jessie, is occasionally giving you a bit of context of your situation. Your world, your real world, of Earth is polluted and dying. Some scientists built the simulation to make something that could possibly fix it. You are delving into the simulation to try and find their work in the hopes of finding a formula or blueprints of something that can help with Earth's plight. The general gameplay is moving around first person. You can run and jump modest distances, but you are mainly searching for ways to get through each puzzle. Sometimes that involves taking a picture of a wall and turning it to bring it to life as a floor. Other times you see what you need on a ceiling and you take a photo then flip it over to correct it in order to proceed. Things like that. The puzzles get more variables the further you get into the game. Playtime. My one playthrough of Viewfinder was just over four hours long and I did clear all of the optional levels. Comparisons to other games. The only other game I can put into the same category as this game for what it did to my brain was super liminal. Both games are amazing and making it feel like you are rewiring your brain in order to solve problems and find new ways of approaching them. The details. Graphics. A majority of the graphics in the game are colorful 3D, but there are many sections where you step into pictures with completely different art styles, drastically changing how the world around you looks. Sound and music. The music of the game was peaceful and always at ease in the background, never distracting me from the problems I was trying to work through and pleasant to listen to. The voice acting of the different characters was great with one exception, I'll come back to that. Controls. The game can be played with controller or mouse and keyboard. I did the latter and had no issue with controls during the game. It does allow you to rebind any of the controls if you wish to, though I never felt the need to change the defaults. Saving system. The game saves any time you properly close it. Due to the rewind feature in the game, which allows you to reverse time like Prince of Persia, I never felt the need to reload the game while playing it, unless I was coming back to it on another day. Content creator concerns. None. I streamed my entire playthrough on Twitch and uploaded the entire thing to our Muckluck Plays YouTube channel and did not experience any muted VODs or have any issues with copyright claims. Do I have anything negative to say? Only two items. One would be the character, Jessie. At the beginning of the game, the first time she speaks to you, it gave me flashbacks of Forspoken. It begins... Did... Hang on. Did you just shift Ria? Oh my god. I just moved it with my freaking mind! I turned off the voice acting audio for an hour or two after hearing Jesse's lines and was just reading all the subtitles. I then decided to give it another chance, and I'm glad I did, because the other characters were a joy to listen to, and Jesse's lines felt a bit more human by the end. The other item is the price. For me, this was about $25 for about four hours of gameplay. In terms of video games, that is expensive compared to some for sure. However, on the flip side, I will say that the experience of playing this game is one I will never forget. I've played 89 games in 2022, and some of them, if you ask me about them, I have to look up which game that was due to a couple of them being so similar. I will never have that problem with Viewfinder. It was a unique, one-of-a-kind, mind-bending experience that stands out all on its own. Own. Final thoughts. When I first purchased Viewfinder, it was after seeing the trailer and thinking, oh my god, this looks like Super Liminal, which is currently my favorite short game of all time. And in terms of puzzles and solutions, I was not disappointed. I absolutely treasured the time I spent on my first playthrough of this and loved the satisfaction I felt as I solved the final few puzzles. If you are okay with the cost for the game time going into it, this incredible experience, at least for me, felt worth it. This video was not sponsored, so if you enjoyed it, please consider hitting that like button to help us out with the YouTube algorithm and subscribe for more content. If you'd like to see my own playthrough of Viewfinder, I'll include a link to that playlist from our other channel down below. Subscribe there too. As always, a massive thank you to our dear patrons who make content like this possible. If you'd like to become a supporter and earn early access, there's a link to that in the description. Don't be shy about the jumps. You can always...